Hi everyone, I'm Kate. Welcome back. If, you, if this is the first time you've joined us for Yoga with Kate, welcome, welcome. I hope you enjoy your session. Otherwise, welcome back to everyone that's joined me in the past. I hope you really do enjoy today's session. Today is a beautiful recovery yoga practice and this one is oriented for releasing our lower back hip sides, upper, upper thighs, and the stomach area. This one is a particular shout out to anyone that may be experiencing menstrual cramps uh, or just nervous tension maybe in the belly, maybe you get digestive distress, anything that really leaves you feeling really tight through the midsection of the body. These are things I have a very intimate relationship with. So my sympathies go out to you and I hope that the practice today can bring you some beautiful relief. However, let's get started. And if you need, once I let you know what you're gonna need for the session, maybe pause the video, make sure you have everything you need so you can be really comfortable today because we do want you to be extremely relaxed. We're here to calm the nervous system, open the muscles and really release that tension in the body. But to do that, we need to have you know, we need to bring comfort to our space and to the body. We can't do that if we're lying on a cold floor, for instance. So today you're gonna to need your yoga mat and then yoga blocks if you have them available to you. You may not need them. It's just in case you wanna bring the ground a little bit closer to you. You can also be using your cans of soup or anything you have in your house if you don't have yoga blocks. And I am very much recommending having a, a cushion or if you have a bolster, I just have a cushion off my couch with me and this is gonna be lovely and supportive for us so that we can make sure it's very nourishing practice for our body. So take a moment now to get all those, pause the video and we will get started. So now if you have everything that you need for your practice, let's begin today lying on our back and we're going to be in reclined bound angle pose or Supta Baddha Konasana. So in this pose, I want you to take the cushion or maybe you have some rolled up blankets, anything that can really support the lower back. And I want you to place that under the lower the back. I have quite a high back arch. And then we're just gonna butterfly the knees out. So here I wanna make sure that the lower back is completely supported. I wanna make sure that our body is nice and calm, no over you know, correction of the back arch, not trying to drive everything into the ground. Just beautiful, relaxed and release. Now just release the arms next to the body. Depending how you're feeling today, if you have had a bit of a frazzled day and we know that if we're feeling tension in the gut or the digestive system, there's around 80% of the nerve activity in our brain. I think it's estimated that 80% go from the gut area to the brain and only 20% go from the brain down. So if we can release and relax the gut area of our body, we can feel a bit more relaxed in our mind. So that's really our thinking body coming into play. But if the, the mind right now is a little bit racing or stressed maybe you want to put the palms down on the ground today and be really nice and grounded to the energy of the room make sure you're feeling safe and secure and just send all those signals to the body that you are safe and here for your practice today if by chance you want to feel a little bit more energized palms up but it's really up to you today i've had a big day today and quite a lot of menstrual pain for me just to share that little golden nugget with you so i'm going to put palms down just drop into the body here and i want us to really relax into this moment don't be forcing any changes in the breath let's just let the body relax and release Big deep inhales and exhales. After the next round of breath, I'd like you to take your right hand and place it on your belly and take your left hand and place that on your heart. I want you to breathe into the belly 
and breathing in as much as we can so we can also feel the heart lifting and then exhale everything out of the body couple rounds of breath here in your own time there's an interesting scientific uh, paper that I've read previously where it says that the energy from our hands and the warmth can actually calm the nerves in our body particularly if you're feeling some anxious feelings or stress feelings placing a hand on the heart in particular can actually calm the nerves and calm the nervous system and assist your body to go back into that healing state the parasympathetic state which is what we want that's our calm rest and digest mode and that's really what we want to give our body the opportunity to reach so a little a little bit more time to really drop in here two more rounds of breath Now on the next exhale, I'd like us to make a nice loud sigh on the out breath, just to really release all the energy from the body. So with me now, big inhale and a sigh out the body. Beautiful work. Relaxing the hands to the side. We're now gonna make our way up to a seated position pushing through the hands and maybe removing the cushion just out to the side for the moment and I want us to come into a cross-legged position if you are comfortable in a seated bound angle with your feet together a seated bound angle simply here Baddha Konasana if you are comfortable here please feel free however today my hips are feeling a little bit closed I've had some cramps so I'm actually going to slightly cross my legs over just to give me a bit more stability through the sit bones so we want to make sure that our sit bones are nice and comfortable on the ground now I want us to place our left hand down to our side as we raise the right arm to the ceiling and a gentle stretch to the left nice big side stretch here but gentle only going to around 60 percent here we definitely don't want to be taking this to 100 yet inhale hands to the sky switching right hand to the ground left hand bending to the right keep the breath circulating here to really balloon through the side Repeat to the other side, raising right hand to the ceiling as we ground through the left, side stretch to the left. Inhale to the ceiling and hand right hand to the ground, left hand to the ceiling. One more time to stretch out the left side of the body. Beautiful work. Hands to the sky as we ground both palms to the ground. Take our right hand, place on our left knee. Pushing through the left hand, I want you to really elongate the spine. Very gentle twist to the left. Now when we're thinking about our twist, we always want to elongate through the spine. We don't want to be crunching through anything. Here we're trying to open the spine up so that we have plenty of blood, oxygen flow and really lubricate and get all of the uh, parts of our spine moving fluidly evenly open that body up back to the middle switching to the other side left hand on right knee pushing through our right hand to really elongate the spine gentle twist to the right you might be feeling some little clicks or clacks in the back as everything clicks back into position if like me even sitting at a desk all day and feeling a little crunch this might be beautiful for the back right now other side again right hand to left knee twisting to the left really using the breath here to find some space through the side body through the spine final round back to the right left hand to right knee 
elongating the spine, twisting to look over our right shoulder. Deep breaths here. Use the breath to find the space. And back to the center. Beautiful work. Turning to the front of our mat now, pushing through the hands. We're going to be going back to our child's pose, Balasana pose. So now, for our child's pose, we want to make sure that our toes are touching. So if you look at my feet, so toes are touching at the back and the big toes are touching and you're just separating the knees. So the knees are about mat width to find a comfortable position. Your hips might be slightly different to mine, so play around and see where it's most comfortable for you. Nice stretch over the front of the body as we run the hands down the mat to have a nice elongated stretch here in child's pose. I want us to sink all of the weight through the buttocks back onto the heels as we sit back. And if you and if you like using the hands to push back to really open up the whole back body here from the shoulder blades down to the lower back and then really actively pushing through those hands. Maybe you'd prefer a bit more of a passive child's pose here today and you might want to relax the head to the ground and gently just drape the stomach between the thighs. If that's available to you, if you're finding that you're struggling or you just don't have, you know, maybe not very close to the ground because of tension in the body, that is totally fine. So maybe you want a block and you can take a block, maybe it's at its highest height and you can gently rest the forehead on the block. This is absolutely perfect if this is available to you. Go with what is going to be the best for your body. Here I, where I want us to be feeling it through the hips and the lower back and the back of the body and really just relax into this pose. Nice deep breaths here. Yeah. Two more rounds of breath here in your own time. Big exhale. Really relax and release any tension you can here. Can you drop just a little bit further? Beautiful work. Now pushing through the hands. Tuck the toes and we're going to be pushing back through the hands into our downward facing dog, hips to the sky, pushing through the hands and really opening up the whole body here. This pose I actually find, if you do have digestive distress, is a fantastic gas release pose. And if you do ever experience any kind of bloating of the stomach, this is a beautiful and it really opens up the entire system again. Now, on the next inhale, I want to take a nice big step with the left foot forward, meeting the right foot next to the left and finding ourselves in a beautiful forward fold. I want us to be extremely passive here, dangling the belly on the thighs, relaxing the head, shaking yes, no. Beautiful, just hang forward in our forward fold here. Now this one, I don't want us to be locked out in the legs. If you are, nice generous bend in the knee. This one is always slightly misunderstood where we think it's more about the hamstrings and the quads, but it isn't really. It's actually about our lower back. And the more we bend into and allow the belly to meet the thighs and to just let our weight hang over the thighs, the more the lower back gets to release. And that's what we want today. On the next inhale, rising up, tall mountain pose, beautiful work, hands to the sky. Finding our hands in prayer position, bringing them down to heart center, samastitihi, beautiful work. Hands to the sky, swan dive, forward fold, halfway lift, flat back. 
Exhale, hands to the ground, stepping back momentarily to our plank, dropping knees to the ground as we lower the belly to the ground. Now, elbows under shoulders as we pull through for Sphinx Pose. Beautiful work. Now, with our Sphinx Pose, I want to make sure glutes are turned on. So, supporting our lower back by using the glutes. So, really squeeze that butt together. And we're pulling through the hands to bring the chest through the shoulders, opening through the tummy. I always find this is a beautiful one. Just really stretch the front body. Exhale, lower to the ground, making a little pillow with our hands. As so we just put left on right or right on left, whichever is your preference, and relaxing the forehead on our hands. Now, making sure our feet are now mat width, I want us to gently just rock the hips side to side. Here I find it's a beautiful little way just to open the lower back, release any tension, and just get a little bit more movement there. Because when we have a lot of tension or cramping or anything like that through the gut, through the lower back, the hips, it's always one way that we just we just want to kind of shake out that tension. Really just give it a bit of a shimmy. Move that state on, yeah? Beautiful. Pushing through the hands back to our child's pose for a very quick transition here, just one round of breath. As we push through the hands, downward facing dog, hips to the sky, pushing through the hands as we try and get those heels closer towards the ground if it's available to you. Maybe a gentle bend through the knees to get the hips a little higher to the sky. Now stepping right leg to the front of the mat, meeting our left with our right, forward fold generous bend through the knees resting belly to thigh give the head a nice relax release any tension in the neck on the next inhale halfway lift flat back exhale forward fold uttanasana inhale raising hands to the sky tall mountain pose and hands to heart center sama stitihi stepping the right foot down the mat i want us to find the long edge of our mat as we come into a wide leg forward fold so feet direction straight towards the side of the mat maybe your hips prefer your feet to be a little bit more open choose your own adventure you will get everything out of this that you need to now if the ground is we're going to be forward folding here however if the ground is pretty far away if it's not very available to you today that is totally fine take a block maybe a stool anything you have available to you and i want you to feel nice and supported here um, firstly belly button think belly button to spine i want us to do a gentle little core tuck here really support the body as we forward fold opening the hips opening the back of the legs and then just relaxing the head forward in our wide leg forward fold I always find it's quite nice I have my block available just to rest my head on the block to be honest <laughs> takes I think our head is a couple kilos for sure and we always just like to take that weight away from the body now we're going to do a couple rounds of breath here and if you can just shimmy the feet a little bit further and see how much more space you can bring into the hips always having our hands supported make sure you can come back up at any time you'll find your limit because you'll get to a point where you're like oh no i can't get up that is not what we want we want to make sure that we can always come back to a standing position at any time so make sure as wide as you go is a comfortable position for you now maybe your stance is quite wide and you can bring yourself down to forearms maybe you're still on a block wherever is comfortable for you. And I just want us to do a couple rounds of breath here. This one can really drive some pretty strong sensations through the hips, through the hip flexors, 
tops of the quads. A couple rounds of breath as we just tell the body we are safe, we are soft, we can open. A couple nice big rounds of breath here. One more round of breath in your own time. Big exhale, pushing through the hands very gently, finding our way to the facing the front of the mat. So pivoting on the left foot and pivoting around on the right, we're going to be finding our low lunge position. And this again is maybe where you want to bring your blocks in so they're the ground's a little more available to you. And we're just going to be opening through that right hip flexor. So again, belly button to spine, slight tuck of the abs, engaging there. A little bit of heat will also help us open these muscles a little bit more. As we gently bend into that left knee, finding our low lunge. For me, I find that the low lunge is also beautiful for opening up this actual compressed hip. I get a lot out of compression and then release. I find that relationship is really beautiful for opening my hip flexors. They can get really quite tight. So not only are you gonna be getting plenty out of this front hip opener, but also through the compressed hip also is getting a beautiful uh, exercise and release on that side too. One more round of breath here. Exhale as we come to the ground, bending through the right knee. So that right leg is bent against our left, coming into jhana sirasana or revolved head to knee pose. So right foot is tucked in towards left thigh, wherever that could be. If you might be a little bit wider, that is totally fine. Whatever is most comfortable for your hips. Extending through the left leg, diagonal along the mat, placing our hands over right knee. Think elongating the spine, hands over right knee, facing the back of your mat, raising right hand to the sky as we bend gently over the left leg. Now think chest, to ceiling here. I don't want us crunching over this front leg. That's not what we want. We hit it open through the side body and through uh, the back and through the chest. And you'll feel it even through the back of the arm, which I always find is quite beautiful. With the hand position, I, I actually like to take my left hand, run it down at my left thigh, and then use that as leverage to open the chest to the ceiling. One more round of breath here. Exhale, back to center. Beautiful work. Now, revolving towards the back of our mat, we're gonna stretch out the other side now, finding low lunge with right leg forward, opening through the left hip flexor, bending through that right knee. Maybe you bring your blocks if needed to bring the ground to you. Otherwise, simply opening through the left hip, bringing chest forward and opening through that hip flexor. One side is going to be different to the other most likely. I always find that this one, I feel it more in the left hip for me is always a bit more crunchy than the right. So whichever side I'm on, I always find I get much more tension in the left than the right. However, this is a beautiful open and release for those hip flexors and particularly through up into our psoas, which this muscle that runs up here can be a real doozy as it connects the, it actually runs over the gut. And so particularly if you're having uh, cramps or tension or if this psoas muscle is quite tight, it can actually cause some nausea. I've had a knot in mine before, not fun to get released. And um, particularly when we're getting a lot of tension through the belly, the psoas is actually can, be uh, quite involved there, so always good to release it. Now we're going to find revolved head to knee on the right leg extension side. So finding our way to the ground, bending left knee in so that the left foot is on the inside of the thigh. Right leg extended diagonal down the mat. Again, hands over our left thigh, looking towards the front edge of our mat this time. So we raise left hand to the sky and then gently folding 
over the right leg, thinking chest revolved to the sky. Hand position might be down the inside of the thigh, might be tucked on this leg. For me, I like to place it gently down the calf and that helps me get a little bit more leverage to revolve the chest to the ceiling as we open through the left side body. Couple more rounds of breath here. We're doing really well. I know this can be a big one for, for a lot of us. This whole muscle girdle that we have through the midsection and lower back, it really can, can get quite tight and painful if we've been sitting down all day, then if we add in cramps or anything like that, this one can be a real doozy, but very beneficial for the body. Back to center, beautiful work. You're nearly there, not long to go now. Now we're going to be finding a gentle forward fold just to release the legs just for a second here, all right? So stretching our legs down towards the front of the mat, I want you to think bending the knees in, belly to thigh, and then find wherever you like to position your hands. I like them on my feet and gently on the inhale, exhale, extending the legs to get a bit more release through the back of the legs, but also I'd like you to think ballooning through the spine. So really rounding and curving the spine here to really just extend the spine to its fullest length and really create some space there. With the breath, extend the legs a little further and see how far you can go, but be nice and gentle with the body here. It's a very gentle release. Keep ballooning through the spine protracting through the shoulder blades. I find that it really helps if I pull back through my feet, we can pull on the legs and really round the back. Here you can do it with a nice flat back. That's a different one for us. Today we're really ballooning and rounding. Beautiful work. Now I want us to come back down to the side edge of our mat as we do a wide leg forward bend. So thinking straddle legs. Now, depending where you are, you might want to have some blocks available to you. You can have a slight bend in the knees, whatever is most comfortable to your body. I like to find a bit of a position by pushing through the hands, shuffling the buttocks to make sure it's nice and flat. Here, I want us to be flexing our feet really nice, strong through the legs. And we're just gently going to bend forward. However, if you find that you are really struggling and you find that your lower back is bending, you might just want to put a block or a cushion under your sit bones, under the buttocks, just to give you a little bit more height so that you can come straight and over into our forward bend. Couple rounds of breath here. Again, another big opener for the hips inside of the thighs. Very big opener here, which I find beautiful. Now feel free at any time, if you, if you find that one of these is just an absolute, you know, golden nugget for you, please pause this video and continue that stretch or maybe rewind at the end and come back to your absolute favorite. Choose your own adventure here. It's your body. You're going to know exactly what you need. One more round of breath. Exhale, pushing through the hands as we swing the feet around to the front. And we're going to find our way onto our back for a reclined figure four. Now again, if you would like a little extra support under the lower back, I'm just going to take my cushion, just place that under my lower back so I'm nice and supported. So make sure that you're comfortable, the lower back is not dangling in midair, we don't want that. Now crossing the right leg over the left. So taking the right foot and resting it on the left thigh, then bending through to bring that left thigh back towards our chest. We find a nice figure four stretch through the outside of our right hip. Now hands, I find it's nice to, I like to rest them just behind the knee to give me a bit more, a bit more of a cradle here to pull back on that left leg to really increase the stretch through the outside of the right hip. Flexing through the right foot to increase the stretch. If it's maybe a bit much, maybe just relax the foot just a little bit today. 
or a release through there. You don't want it, you know, if you if you are really feeling it in the lower back and the in the thighs, and maybe the sensation's a bit too much, listen to your body. Always do what your body is um, needing in that moment. Listening to our body is always best. Couple more rounds of breath here. Maybe just shutting down the eyes, relaxing the gaze. So we relax the legs, extending right and left leg down the mat. Have just a moment here to relax the body. Beautiful. Bending through the right knee, crossing left foot over right thigh as we find some leverage behind the left thigh and pulling those legs towards the chest and flexing through the left foot, finding a nice big figure four stretch through the left outer hip. You might feel it the whole way through the ITB, down to the buttocks, wrapping down through the hip. And the more we open through this area, the better it is for our lower back in particular, because all of these areas, they're some of the biggest muscles, the glutes, the quads, and they really are. If one is tense, the other will be feeling it. So definitely opening through here is always a positive, positive thing to be doing. A couple more rounds of breath in your own time. One more round of breath as we then release. Beautiful. Releasing the left leg from the right. Now I want us to keep both legs bent in towards the chest, bringing knees to chest. And this pose is actually called gas release pose. So let it rip if that's what you're needing today. But we're just going to be gently giving the knees a nice big hug in towards the chest. This one brings a lot of beautiful compression and, and I've heard it said before that when we compress the, the digestive system, in particular using a pose like this, you can actually then excite more blood flow, fresh blood to be pushed into that area when we open the release. So let's extend the legs nice and long down the mat. Beautiful work. I'm going to just remove the cushion as we go into our reclined twist right here. If you want to keep the cushion underneath, choose your own adventure, whatever can be most comfortable for your body. However, bending left knee into chest, right hand wraps around left knee as we take that left knee across the body. Let's just shuffle that right hip back underneath a little bit so that our right leg is aligned with our spine. Gently open our left wing out and look over the left shoulder if it's available to you. Have a beautiful, big, deep twist through the entire body. Beautiful work. Just soften. Now if the knee is quite high, feel free to put a cushion or a block or anything here to really bridge that gap between you and the ground. We don't want to put any unnecessary tension on the knees. Uh, or any additional pulling on the lower back, just based on the fact that gravity is working maybe against us a little bit. One more round of breath here. And on the exhale, back to the center, switching the legs over as we extend the left down the mat, bending our right knee into our chest, giving a bit of a squeeze with the left hand taking that right knee across the body to the left hand side of the room as we open through the right wing. Now you might want to shuffle that left hip back underneath to really lengthen and straighten the spine. Make sure that the left leg is aligned with your nice straight spine as we look over the right shoulder. Nice big deep twist here. Again, you might find that one side of the body is slightly more open than the other, and that's totally fine. My 
beautiful feline trainer has just come out of his bedroom to go partake in his dinner. <laughs> that is Schmidt for anyone that's interested in playing along at home. Beautiful work on the exhale back to center. Now I want us to take a nice big extend the legs down the mat and like we did on our belly earlier on just give the hips a little bit of a shake and just release the tension through the lower body. Beautiful work. To finish up, I would like us to go into a happy baby pose. So finding a happy baby, bending knees to chest, taking legs at a 90 degree angle. And if, depending where it's available to you, maybe hands behind the knees as we trying to pull the knees towards our armpits. Or maybe you can reach the feet and grabbing the outside edge of the feet as we pull those knees towards the armpits. Really big opener here for the hips as again we compress those hip flexors and really push in and get the blood flow going through the hips that this will just open the muscles and, and tell the body this is the tense feeling and then when we release that is the relaxation feeling. Happy baby. If your happy baby also likes to have a bit of a rock Feel free to have a bit of a rock about here. Maybe that massages the lower back into the mat. Beautiful work. Releasing legs down the mat, finding Shavasana, taking a moment if needed for any final movement that is going to really cap off your practice. So we drop into Shavasana when you are ready. Legs nice and wide, nice. I like to have my feet at the width of the mat, feeling really nice and supported here. Again, you might want to take the cushion, place it under the lower back. Like we began, depending how you're feeling now, palms could be facing down, palms could be facing up. You must just tuck the shoulders gently under the body so that the shoulder blades are supported. The chest is open and we'll gently close down the eyes. And drop into our Shavasana. Deepen the breath. Take a moment to just notice the change in sensation in the body. Thanking the body for the beautiful fresh blood that is making those Going through the body, which is pumping through our muscles, all the tendons and the tissues that may have been tense at the start of the practice, and maybe now they are slightly released. I will leave you here in your Shavasana. Namaste. Have a great day. Namaste.